guys, I've just been sent this brand new wireless CarPlay and Android Auto adapter. But just as a side disclaimer, the box that I have is a pre-release factory version. This is the actual screenshot of the public release version of the box that you will get if you do order this package. And as you guys have seen from the thumbnail of this video, this is capable to play back any of your streaming apps like YouTube, Netflix, Disney+, Hulu and anything else from the Google Play Store because this has its own OS built on the Android 12 system. I'm pretty excited to try this out. This essentially comes in two different versions. It's currently on Kickstarter and it's being marketed as the world's first BMW mini smart CarPlay AI box. It's quite a long name, but there's also a universal version, which is this one here, which is compatible with any other car, not necessarily a BMW, which supports having a wired CarPlay adapter installed. So if you do have CarPlay Android Auto capabilities in your car, and you have a USB port, then most likely this would work absolutely fine. This is called the CarLux Pro, and I'm going to set this up in my car by testing it out for a few days. This has a little USB-C port there to connect it to your USB port in your car. And just on the other side, one thing I really like about it is you can expand this with a micro SD card and go up to 256 gigabytes to have maybe local storage of other media files that you can play back onto your car. This also has a SIM card slot as well. So if you wanted to use data and have a hotspot system set up in your car, then you can use all of those streaming apps and anything else from the Google Play Store by using the data on the SIM card that you attach to this box as well. Inside, you get a small user manual. Just provide some information about how to get set up and running. You can see there's a little screenshot of how the UI will look, which I think is really great because I'm gonna be using this in my Range Rover vlog and it's going to change the system completely from the Land Rover infotainment system that's currently on there. And then you also have a USB cable, which you're going to need to connect it. This has a USB-C to USB-A adapter on there, but I'll be taking that off and just connecting it via the traditional USB port. So I'm gonna go and test this out for a few days, see how this performs, and I'm gonna feedback with you of all of the good things that I like about it, how it performs, some of the drawbacks, and overall how this system works as a brand new UI to my Range Rover Velop. So let's jump straight into that now. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the CarLux Pro into the USB. You'll notice that this will pop up on the screen here with a brand new operating system and it will load with a nice little jingle. Now I've used this for a couple of days now. It's gone directly straight into Apple CarPlay, which I have set it up with, as you can see, which is convenient and that's something that I'd like. If I want to go back and showcase to you guys the actual UI that this is built on, I just need to hit the Land Rover button just there. And this is the main home screen of this new AI CarLux Pro device. Now you can see there's a lot of different little widgets here and I'm just going to run through how this works because I think this is something that is going to change my whole system completely. You see there's a little speedometer there on the left hand side. You can change the kilometers per hour to miles per hour as well so as you're driving this will actually update and show you your speed in real time which I think is quite nice. You've got a little music widget you can go directly into CarPlay or Android Auto from here. You've got a weather widget there and you've got the Netflix widget there. You can customize these widgets and show various different ones which I'll showcase in a second. And you've got a little dock along the bottom kind of like my MacBook Pro which you can also customize and add whichever apps you like. I've gone and added YouTube, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, CarPlay, Settings and Spotify. If you didn't want to use Apple CarPlay, maybe you don't want to use it for your navigation, then you can just use this to have as a screen just there as default. You can use it to play back your Spotify music. And yes, you can also use the controls on your steering wheel to control different things on the actual system itself, like your music, your playback. You can also use it to answer and end calls. One thing I haven't found how to use my steering wheel button is the voice assistant button on the steering wheel. This goes into the default Land Rover one, but because this is based on the Google Android system, you can also use Google Assistant as well by pressing this second button here in the dock. So it's quite convenient. Let's go and show you how all of the other apps are installed. You can cycle through various different pages. These are all the default apps that came with the device, so I haven't installed any other new ones. You can see there's a whole bunch of them. You've got like nice little animations, you've got dynamically. If I just show you dynamically, for example, it kind of just gives you this nice little ambient music video. It kind of loops in the background. It's no other purpose than just to have a bit of ambience there, show you like maybe dynamic videos and 
This is actually quite a nice quality, it's quite clear. You can see it's pretty HD as well. Now if you wanted to go back, you just hit the button on the bottom left of the dock there and it goes back to the home screen. Various different things you can do. There's also the option for you to go back to your original car system, which is that icon just there. You can check your files and um, you can go into Google Maps. You can add more apps via the Google Play Store. You just need to sign in. And pretty much you can install anything you like from the Google Play Store, which I think is great. And this is something that I've not come across any other device do so far. So I'm pretty happy that I've come across this. If I wanted to use navigation, I think it's a lot more smoother to just go into CarPlay and use the one built directly into that. One other thing to remember is if you are going to be maybe using Google Maps or you're going to be watching content from here, you need to have a Wi-Fi connection. And I personally will do that by using Hotspot from my phone. So if you go into settings, just going to show you where you can do all of these different things. You can connect to mobile data. So you know the mobile data SIM card slot that's in the device itself. You can put a SIM card in there and that will give you a hotspot Wi-Fi for your car and you can connect that with mobile data there. If you go into Wi-Fi, I need to turn this on. If you did have CarPlay connected, you'll have to disconnect from the Wi-Fi from CarPlay. You'll get a confirmation like this and you just need to hit the short button. Then you will be able to search for Wi-Fi and you can go ahead and connect to your phone's Wi-Fi. There we go. Let's come up with my phone. I'm now connected to the Wi-Fi. You can also change the layout of the UI that you saw on the homepage. So I've currently got layout one, which I think is quite nice. If you wanted a couple of other different options here just to make larger views of different things, you can do that there. HDMI cinema. If you do have a HDMI port in your car, like I do as well, then you can connect the HDMI source, maybe an Amazon Fire Stick, maybe a Chromecast, something like that and load anything from the HDMI directly onto this UI as well, which I think is a very nice thing to have. Of course, the car hotspot, like I mentioned, if you do have a SIM card in there, you can turn that on. Wallpaper, there's a few options here that you can cycle between. I've just kept it as the default, which is fine. Start animation, this is the booting system that came up here. You can turn the sound on and off from that. I kind of like the sound, so I'm just gonna keep it on for now. If you wanted to replace it at any time, then you can also do that. If you go into system settings, you'll notice if I just go back to the home and I'll go back to the main page, you can also change your kilometers per hour and miles per hour from that system settings for that widget there. You can also change the location for your weather app like I've got down here. Let's go back to system settings, go to auxiliary settings. You can see time zone, I've set that to GMT. I've got it as English. You can set the media volume for your default one, so I can bring that down to maybe 10. Display unit, I'm gonna set that as miles per hour, the temperature in Celsius, and the time format, I'm going to change that to the one that's relevant for me, day, month, and year. You can also go ahead and do an update to the system as well, so when you go to version information, you can check for updates there, and this will try and find any updates for the UI, and then you can go ahead and go and update it directly in case maybe you're coming across any bugs or anything like that. So now let me show you a quick example of this widget whilst driving the car. And I think it's quite nice. So if you do want to maybe show kilometers per hour as a kind of variation to maybe you already having miles per hour on your speedometer in your dashboard behind your steering wheel, then it's perfectly capable to do that. Once you do click on that widget, it brings up like a larger view of it showing the speed. On the left hand side of this, you have the Android Auto button and the Bluetooth button underneath. And on the right hand side, you have CarPlay and the exit button. When you hit that exit button, that comes out of the widget and it goes back to the home screen. Now to customize the layout and what widgets you'd like to show, all you need to do is hold down that bottom left icon there in the dock and it pops up with all of these different icons that you can either remove from the dock or replace the widget. So this weather widget, for example, if I tap that, I now have an option to replace it with any other widget. So there's various different options. You've even got TikTok there as well. You can just cycle through. I think I'm going to go and add YouTube instead. So now I have YouTube and Netflix. So that's really convenient as well. So if you wanted to switch those up, if I hold that down again, you can remove one of the options in the dock. And then if you hit the plus button, you can change this and add maybe like another app to the dock as well. 
So that's really convenient. And let's go ahead and see how the content seems like when you want to play back maybe something from Netflix, for example. Now, just remember, this is not a natively developed app by Netflix for CarPlay. So it's going to feel like more like the desktop versions. So it might be a little bit clunky, but overall I think it's quite a nice thing to have if you wanted to maybe park up somewhere and you just wanted to watch something instead of maybe just browsing on your phone. Plays perfectly fine, there's no lag. It's streaming pretty good. And if you want to back out, then you can just tap. You also get this floating button as well in case you want it to back out this way. You can hit back on that. You can hit back again. And that will go to the home page. If, for example, you wanted to go directly to all your background apps, you also have the background button just on the right hand side of this. This will load up all of the apps that you have open and you can also clear it all like so. So that's another convenient way to maybe switch between different apps that you may have open. Let's go on to YouTube for example. Let's go and search. This is the keyboard. It's not the smoothest keyboard but it does the job and that's pretty much expected when you do have a third party device connected to your system. So let's go to my channel and we can play something back. So everything is playing well. Control the music with the system volume as well. You can also double tap like you're using your phone to just skip 10 seconds. That's actually very convenient as well. I just found that out now by accident, to be honest. I think that's quite nice. And if you do remember to go back, you need to maybe close the video. Otherwise, it does continue playing in the background until you close it. So now I can just hit that and then go home. Okay, so now let's take a look at downloading some apps via the Google Play Store. So one thing I really like about this is you have the entire Play Store at your hand. So if there's anything else you'd like to add to the system, you can absolutely do that. I'm going to see if I can try and download a game as well. So if you have some spare time, then you can maybe play a game on this. But hopefully that would be quite responsive. Let's do a search for Amazon Prime Video. And let's go ahead and install this. There we go, it's installed. Let's go and check where it is on the home page. Scroll to the right and it's added there to the end of the list. So now we go ahead and we can log in and play back content directly from Prime Video. So I've just logged in and there we have it. Amazon Prime Video. You can pretty much watch anything on here as well. Let's go ahead and play a sample very quickly. And there you have it, pretty smooth playback, straight in. Took a couple of minutes from downloading to installing, logging in and playing back some content. So very quick and easy. Let's go ahead and now try out by downloading a game and see how that performs on this system. I wouldn't recommend downloading any high-end fast games because it's not built for that type of gaming. But I'm just going to download a simple game and see if this works. Let's go ahead and hit play directly from there. To be honest, it's working pretty well. 
the game itself you have to remember is not going to be optimized for this type of screen and resolution and size but on the whole everything seems to be working pretty much how I would expect it there's not a lot of problems with it it's got some music in the background as well and you can see that's worked you know very well and I can install lots more games like this if I wanted to get any maybe productivity apps or business apps from the Play Store just remember that it's not optimized for this type of resolution so you may have some problems with some of those various different types of complex apps and I wouldn't definitely recommend downloading any financial apps but everything else gaming content streaming all of that kind of stuff navigation I think that works absolutely fine so even if you wanted to install a specific navigation system like TomTom Tom, for example then you can also do that from here as well so you don't necessarily need to just use Google Maps or Apple Maps or anything like that one other thing as well if you swipe left from the home screen you can actually see your CPU and ROM and RAM usage in real time of the system just to see if there's any reasons why it's slowing down you can see if it's maybe maxing out and you might need to clear the cache or if you have any problems then you can also maybe close off some background apps and things like that which I think is very useful so one other question that I used to get with CarPlay videos like this is if I do have something playing on this with a third-party adapter can you still drive your car while the video is still playing with this yes you can so I'm now going to put my car in drive I'm off the street I'm in my back garden actually so I'm on my private own property so I'm not on the road so I'm just going to drive forward a bit and you can see I'm driving and this is still playing so I'm just going to park now one thing I just want to mention although yes you can drive while the video is still playing so either Netflix YouTube whatever it may be but I would not recommend that at all because that is a distraction and it could be very dangerous for you to actually maybe get distracted and get into an accident in most countries that would be illegal to do so remember that you should not do that at any time because that could be very dangerous for you it's always recommended to make sure when you do go into system settings and general settings just make sure when you do have driving warning always have that set to on and don't turn that off because that is important for you to remember to not maybe play something when you are driving on any of the roads you also have boot options here so you can decide between carplay and android auto which one you want to load for the first time you can change the touch cursor sensitivity from slow to quick and you can also turn off the boot animation to force show it every single time you load this screen you can also do a reset if in case you are coming up with any problems you can also clear the cache if it starts running very slowly over time so plenty of different options here which I think are very neat and it's a very nice way to have a, a new system to be honest based on what I've used in the past the last thing if you maybe just wanted to showcase to your friends or your passengers in your car something that you have on your phone or a video that you have on your phone's gallery for example then you can also screen mirror directly from your iPhone or your Android phone using Supercast directly onto this screen as well so you have this option here called Supercast if you go in there it tells you M30 Pro screen mirroring that showed up like this you select that and how quick and easy is that so now my phone is mirroring directly onto there so I can go onto YouTube for example I can go to my videos I can play back a video and I can go into full screen and that will go into full landscape as well there we go it's not so smooth but it does a great enough job if you really wanted to showcase any videos if I wanted to maybe show photos instead then that would be even better here's some pics from my trip to Dubai and it's just a quick and easy way to screen mirror directly from your phone so this is actually packed with a whole bunch of features in the system which I can't fault and finally let's check Google Assistant see how well that works so just hit that button there what is the weather today? There will be scattered showers with a high of 49 and a low of 41. Right now it's 49 and cloud. Pretty convenient, that works pretty well, so quite impressed with that. Overall, you know, this one pretty much does everything that I would expect a box like this to do. I'm so impressed with the way they've done this. 
and the way they can also feed out future updates to improve the performance on this, the speed, the latency, maybe compatibility with some of the apps. I think it's just great. So hopefully that was a very useful review for you guys. I'm going to continue using Apple CarPlay as my main means of using navigation, for example. So that's it guys. Hopefully that was a very useful review of the CarLux Pro adapter. I'm super happy with this. I think this does so many things that I've not come across any other adapter to do. Take a look at the link in the description below to find out more information about this device and how you can purchase it, the latest pricing information. And if you guys have any other questions about its capabilities, then as always, drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys at the next one. Take care.